What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company with a little caddis larva type bait today. I'm going to be using peacock quill for the body so you could call it like a quill caddis larva. Caddis larva are typically like green and black so that's really why I'm calling it this. They're not necessarily a, a still water forage but I really like this pattern that I saw. So I've got just a size 12 Umqua U202 in my vise and the bead I'm using is a 532nd fire hole tungsten bead in matte black. I really really like fire hole beads. They're super high quality, the paint just never comes off. They're just great beads. A little spendy but you get 28 instead of 20 so I think that's why they're more expensive. But so this tail, I've tied a few of these and I've gone back and forth on these tails. There's a million different things that you could do for this tail. But what I've been doing is I've got some of this chartreuse. Again, this is going to be a green and a black bait. So I've got kind of this chartreuse hackle and I've just, you can see, I've just been stripping little pieces of this. I don't necessarily want to use the short, super spiky stuff but I don't want to necessarily use this fluff either. There's kind of this happy in between, right? It transitions and I've just been using this. You could use, I'm gonna use partridge for the head, but you could for sure use it for the tail too. You could use pheasant, you can use a cocktail own, you could use whatever you want. I'm just gonna take a little bit of these. I don't know, this is probably, I want a big tail. You could use three of these, you could use 30. I'll probably take, I don't know, that's maybe 15 to 20. And I'm going to strip these off, and I want them to be as aligned as I can. So these are in my left hand, so I'm just going to pinch with my thumbs like this, and I can kind of rotate them like that, and then I can transfer them to my other hand. And I want this to be pretty low into my hook. I want a pretty long body, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm building up a little bit of a bump there. I don't really want that. So I'm going to put this down. I don't know, at least, I mean, curved shanks are always a little tricky for, you know, to, to measure out. But I want it to be not quite full, but I want it to be enough of a tail where you'll be able to notice it. That's just how I kind of want to tie this. You could put, again, you could put five fibers on there. You could put... 50. You don't have to have a tail at all. You can do whatever you want. I just want to make sure that's as even as I can get it. And I'm just going to wrap all this down. I want a really even body on this. So I'm just going to keep all that on there. Then I can come back up. I'm going to push this. This is just 0.015 lead wire that I just put in there to kind of stabilize my bead. I'm going to want to make sure that I keep my this is UTC 70, that I keep it pretty uncorded the whole time just because I want a nice flat body and when it cords up it's just a little bit trickier to to lay it really flat. So I'll come back down here. I'm not going to build up too much of my body yet because I have to put my quill down. So I've just got, I've got this Nature Spirit Caddis Green uh, dyed peacock and I just took an eraser you know a lot of people do that <clears throat> I just took an eraser and I stripped all of it I think this is a little over two inches I want the thick part I mean this this was probably a five inch quill but I cut off that thin because this is a in relative terms this is a decently sized bait you know I'm not tying an 18 so I want the bigger part of it and it's stronger too because I'm going to wrap this, obviously, and I just, this is, this can be really tricky stuff to, to spin around your hook, and it's just really delicate, so you got to kind of be careful. So I've got that down, and I'm just going to, even though I'm going to have dubbing and a bunch of other stuff up by this bead, I'm just going to kind of build that into my body, because this bead is big, so I'm not going to worry too much about going 
too far up and running out of room by my bead. I'm not gonna go all the way down, I'm gonna come back up just a couple because this is a thicker, these quills aren't super thick, but you really don't want a super thick body. Again, this is all opinion. So I've got just a little bit of a taper there. And then I'm gonna spin this around. I found it easier. Maybe it's my skill level, but just getting a pair of hackle pliers and wrapping this, it just seems to go a little bit better. And I'm just gonna push them right up against each other. I'm not gonna overlap. You could leave a little bit of a space in between these to just put a little black on it, but I'm gonna touch them right up to each other as I go up. And I should have plenty of this quill. Again, this is a little over two inches for a size 12. So you can kind of think, you know, if, even, if, even if I had a size 10 here, this would probably be enough unless you made your body really big. Because this is probably about where my body's gonna be, even maybe a little bit back farther than that. So I ended up having plenty to spare here, even though I cut probably half of this quill. And then I can just pop it out of there. I'm gonna trim it. Before I put anything up by this bead, I'm gonna take just a little bit of bone dry and I'm gonna coat this quill for durability, but it really just makes the quill, it makes it look just a little bit, just makes it stand out a little bit more. I'm just, so I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit to that and I'll just spread it around. I'm not building up a body or anything, just putting a little bit on there Spread it out, don't miss any of your tail. And I can just grab my light, and this will take just a second for this stuff to cure on here. And this, what I'm gonna do up for this thorax is kind of four different things. I've got dubbing, thin skin, partridge, and a little bit of tinsel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna end up wrapping that up last. I've just got a little bit of kind of olive -y holographic tinsel. And so I'm gonna put that down first, because you always put down first what you're gonna wrap last. So I'm gonna bring that back, and I want a decent body, so I'm gonna come onto my quill just a little bit. Just wanna make sure that that's centered. I actually kinda of like the thorax to be pretty big on this. So the next thing I'm gonna put down is my thin skin. I trimmed just a little bit of a point onto that thin skin. This might be pheno skin, I can't remember. They're pretty much the same thing. Just so I can kinda of squeeze it into my bead and get those first couple wraps down. And I just wanna make sure that when I'm doing this, it's nice and centered on my hook, when I wrap it up with my tinsel, I wanna make sure that they're gonna be nice and in the middle, make your fly look nice and neat. So then I can wrap that off. And then I'm gonna grab my dubbing. So my dubbing is squirrel hair black with a little bit of caddis green hair's ice dub, just a tiny, tiny bit. I took a little ice, hair's ice dub out and I put it in there and I broke it up into little pieces because that stuff's pretty long and this squirrel dubbing is short. So I put a little bit in there, blended it up. I'm not gonna need this much, but I'm gonna make probably half a dozen of these. So I think this is my fourth one. So I got a couple more that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna actually add a pretty decent amount to this. It's not gonna be a tiny little bit and I'm gonna put a little bit more on at the end, right at the end, so I just avoid some, a bunch of thread up by my bead. But I'm gonna add a little bit at a time. If I, need, if I think I need to add more now, 
I can always add a little bit more. I'll work my way back right up to my bead. So I'll put a little bit more by my bead. So I'm going to bring my thread right up by my bead and I've got my partridge. So I cut just a little bit of a V into my partridge. You can fold it back and snip the tip or you can just press your fine tip scissors right onto it. You can really do whatever you want. And I want these legs so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do I'm going to put the stem aligned right up with my bead and I'm just going to hold it down as centered as I can and I can just give it a little bit of a loose wrap. I want to make sure that it's right behind my bead and I just need a little bit of pressure on there. I don't need a ton. And I can kind of work those fibers onto each side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up but I can see that that's going to be a little bit too long just a little bit. So I'm going to pull keeping these fibers on both sides I'm going to pull just a little bit out at a time so I can figure out the length that I want for this. I'm going to keep them a little bit longer. I kind of like them a little bit longer. Maybe that's still just a little bit too long. So I'll pull just be super careful when you're doing this because a little bit goes a long way and I only have one wrap on here so you just have to be pretty careful. I'm going to hold this and kind of cinch that in but I don't want it to rotate too much so I'm going to pull these to this side this partridge is a little bit tougher it's kind of nice pheasant can be a little bit a little bit delicate but so if you're using pheasant so that looks pretty good I'm gonna give it maybe two three more wraps and I'm just gonna bring up my thin skin I'm not gonna bring up my tinsel yet because if I wrap too much over that tinsel it's not gonna show as much so I'm gonna bring this up Again, just a, maybe I'll even cord my thread just so I can bite down on that thin skin a little bit so I don't have to I just want to be careful with how many wraps I'm putting down here just want to make sure that that's centered stretch it a little bit and I can get that down and just make sure that it's centered so then I can trim all of it off so that thin skins down one more little wrap and then I'm going to trim off this feather and the thin skin at the same time just get as close as you can without cutting all your stuff off then I can come in and do it just a little bit more once I get some of that stuff off but I'm going to end up putting some resin on this anyway so now I can take my tinsel and I can bring it up because again, I don't want, uh, I just want a couple wraps. I'm basically just going to whip finish this off when I get this tinsel where I want it. I'm going to put a little pressure on this tinsel. And you want to be careful that when you do those wraps, those first couple wraps, that it doesn't move on you. Because it's going to want to rotate a little bit. So just two little wraps. And then I'm going to trim this off and you could even fold this back here and get a couple wraps there and then trim that if you want a little bit of that extra flash just trim that really close keep that for the next one because you just use a minuscule amount so the last thing I'm going to do is I've got just a little bit of thread built up right under my stuff and so I'm just going to put on just a tiny bit of this dubbing of this squirrel dubbing and I just want I'm going to come up under that and I just want to cover it I'll kind of come under my thin skin and I can clear off the stuff that I don't want and I'm just going to get one wrap here and I'm going to whip finish just like two maybe three turns because I don't want to build up more thread of the dubbing I just put down. So just like a two turn and if I tighten that down enough it really 
won't go anywhere. You could do this with some security. You could put some super glue down or something like that. But I just wanted to cover up those thread wraps. So now I can trim off some of this dubbing up here because I'm going to put down some of this bone dry. I'm going to build up just a little bit of a body on the or a bump on this thorax, almost kind of like a like an evil olive or something like that. It's not going to be quite that pronounced, but it's going to help this that tinsel shine a lot more. So I'm just going to start with my body and I'll come up and this stuff is really thin so I'm just gonna get a little bit layered at a time I'll just put my UV on that just so it doesn't run the stuff is thin enough where it will kinda go into your dubbing if you're not careful so I'm just gonna put one little layer at a time come up to my bead put a little bit on my bead and then I can put a little bit on each side just to make sure that that body is even on both sides and this bone dry stuff is just awesome so there you have it, a little caddis, green, larva, nymph, whatever you want to call it. I really, really like these. You could do these. I've been doing a couple in orange as well with orange everything except for I've stuck with the black. But nice and heavy with that 530 second, this thing is going to sink like a rock. Tie these up in 14s, 16s, 10s. Like and subscribe, drop a comment below, something you want to see, something I haven't done yet. I don't think I've done a video with quills before, but I'm really kind of, I go through phases and I don't know if, I, you know, the next three videos might be quills, but Junior's Fishing Company, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.